In more modern times, we've had uh, people we consider quality gurus, uh, people like Dr. Deming, Dr. Duran, Phil Crosby, Dr. Fagenbaum, and uh, Dr. Ishikawa. And, and they've all started out by trying to find quality. And whether they've talked about like quality as fitness for use, as Dr. Duran did, or they talk about quality as conformance to requirements, as Phil Crosby did, or like Kuru Ishikawa, relating customer satisfaction to quality. What we see is each of those is talking about quality in a sense that's relative to one component of an overall concept of quality. And what's happened over the times is that they have focused on the operational details of quality. And so today, when most organizations talk about quality, they consider things like ISO 9000 or ISO 14000, the standards approach. They might consider the EFQM, or the European Foundation for Quality Management's Excellence Criteria, uh, which is also a structured approach to dealing with questioning. And many times what we see is that they are talking about this, and the quality strategy is what do we do? Do we implement these tools? Do we do lean? Do we do statistical analysis? Do we do Six Sigma? And all of those are talking really about managing the quality function. Dr. Duran called this little Q or operational quality. But today, what we see is there's a need for something different. And the need is to consider quality from a more organization-wide perspective, what the Japanese call total quality or company-wide quality. And here, what we see is that we are managing for quality results. Whether those results are financial, in other words, the customer is the uh, shareholder or the owner or the person who has a financial interest in the organization, or they're operational, where we're delivering value to a customer through our products and services. And here, we're managing for quality to produce this outcome. And the emphasis is strategic. Dr. Duran called this big quality. And the difference is, at the strategic level, we are actually creating not just a foundation of quality tools, as we do with Little Q, where we're building a base for how processes work. That's what you learn in industrial engineering and management, this foundation of how to make the processes work. However, when we think about entrepreneurship, we think about innovation, we think about startup companies, we're creating the next new idea. We're positioning our company with technology and technology that attracts customers so it's fit for love. As Steve Jobs said with the iPhone, make it so people want to eat it, that it's got that level of attraction. And so fitness for love, what Dr. Kano calls attractive quality, is what we would like to have in terms of being able to incite somebody to say, let's get more of this. And then that process becomes, if you will, the runaway, the next big uh, thing that people are wanting. And so they have this compulsion to want to buy it or be involved in it or engaged in that process. Just as, we hope, this video goes viral. And you all want to learn more about the next step of quality. So we have a little time now for reflection. And think about what's the difference between quality strategy, doing all the fundamentals in terms of making a process work and deliver value without waste or loss, and quality as strategy, where we create a new positioning for our organization's products and services that drives excitement in the marketplace. So people say, I have to have it. So we have a reflective question again for you to think about and reflect upon how this actually means and what does it mean in terms of your own experience. So thank you very much and we'll see you soon for the last video.